a young boy watches as workers in a factory become frustrated with waiting. They want to talk to the factory owner, but guards with batons prevent them and use violence. The factory head's voice comes over the loudspeakers, inviting only one person to join him and telling the rest to leave. In the evening, the boy discusses rights and stands up for them with his father. Even though other children's parents are content, the father believes in always fighting for what is right, as it is essential to being human. The next morning, the boy hears discussions in the house. His mother reveals that his father has gone to find his friends at the factory since they didn't return after the riot. She suggests the boy visit the missing workers' homes to check on their families. However, she suspects it might be a setup, with the families possibly being paid to lie about their situation. Sonkaka's mom rushed to the factory to warn her dad about a danger, but she hurt her leg and couldn't make it. Determined, Sonkaka tried to reach his dad on his own but failed. Sadly, he witnessed his father's tragic death as someone secretly attacked him. Devastated, Sonkaka mourned his loss, but his grief triggered a special power in him. Unintentionally shooting lightning bolts, he accidentally flew into a pole, surprising those who tried to examine him. A year later, Sonkaka learned from his mom that they had to sell their house due to financial struggles and move to a simple apartment. Sonkaka feels lost without his mother, especially in the evening when a storm outside makes everything scary. Hungry and upset, he throws crumbs in the street. When a neighbor brings him food, Sonkaka eats and leaves. Unsure where to go, he runs away but gets caught by some guys who beat him up. A stranger saves him from a falling beam, beats up the guys, and takes Sonkaka to safety. In the new place, Sonkaka learns that the stranger, Ogung, protected him for standing up for a girl. Ogung promises to teach Sonkaka how to fight, sharing his own story of escaping bullies. They start training everywhere, and Ogung mentions a train leaving tomorrow. However, he refuses to take Sonkaka along. A boy dreams of his mother returning home, but his friend Agum wakes him up to join a journey. They chase after a train, but only Agum grabs it, leaving the boy, Sonkaka, alone on the streets. Sonkaka faces the challenges of surviving, witnessing street crimes. One day, he's chased by vengeful guys but is saved by a caring family. However, Sonkaka, overwhelmed by street chaos, runs away. As the years pass, he grows up on the streets, works in a factory, and becomes calm, but remains afraid of lightning. Meanwhile, at a social gathering, men discuss Pankor, who had a tough childhood, but later, he inherited his father's wealth, liberated mistreated orphans, and opened numerous orphanages across the country. After talking with his family, the man heads to their car. On the way, they encounter some needy people. The kids ask to give them money, and the father agrees. When they reach home as a family, the man remains watchful, sensing a potential threat. He escorts the family inside and checks the surroundings. Initially finding no one, a man with a flaming hand suddenly appears, rendering him unconscious with a single word. He wakes up tied to a chair, observing his family hanging over an abyss. The man is blackmailed, leading to the tragic demise of both him and his family. Meanwhile, Sonkaka, having a frightening dream about his apartment, is interrupted by a knock in the neighboring room. Men are harassing someone, and Sonkaka steps in to help them escape. Returning home, he hears knocking again. It's the bullies bothering a poor woman for money. Sonkaka intervenes and disperses them, but they pull out knives, unaware that it won't save them. Another man arrives, saving the woman and child from unnecessary violence. He wakes up at home to a knock on the door. A woman has brought him a child named Teddy to babysit. Meanwhile, Pankor offers condolences for the young deputy's death, even though everyone suspects he's the one who killed him. Pankor's true intention is to increase his power at any cost. In the meantime, some men discreetly plant reagent capsules in bags. Sonkaka talks to Teddy to learn more about him and his mother. Teddy claimed that the woman with him wasn't his mother, but his sister, Vulon. Teddy always wore damaged headphones to avoid talking to people. Sankaka gave him a Walkman so he could enjoy listening to music. During a riot in the market, Sonakaka brought Teddy to his sister. She, along with her friends, was involved in the chaos. Unfortunately, a group started fighting with Sankaka. Surprisingly, Sankaka discovered he had unusual strength and accidentally released lightning bolts during fight with 30 people. His bruises healed quickly. Later, rebels asked Sonkaka to defend the market, but he refused, insisting he wasn't a superhero. Upon going outside, Sonkaka found the market burned down. Vulan explained it was related to the legislator, Pencor's friend. 
Feeling helpless, Sonkaka wondered who could help them. In the evening, amidst thunder and lightning, Sonkaka went outside and was struck by lightning again. When hit by Vulan, he seemed unfazed by the pain. As people rioted, they discovered the market fire was a result of someone injecting serum into the rice. The news claimed this would make the children of pregnant mothers immoral, posing a threat of increased criminality in the next generation. Bullies with truncheons roamed the streets until a masked man, revealed to be Sonkaka, appeared. He confronted the scoundrels, and despite being stabbed with a knife, Sonkaka remained unafraid. Today, there's a storm, and as the rain falls, the girl asks Sonkaka about his background. Sonkaka shares a picture of his mother and the girl reacts strangely. Sonkaka then goes under the zipper, magically healing all his wounds. Realizing his newfound abilities, he decides to create antennae and a whole superhero suit using materials at hand. At night, bandits try to break into an old couple's home, but they mysteriously vanish. It's Sonkaka testing his new superhero costume. Simultaneously, two men are digging up a mysterious object, believing it can help defeat a particular enemy. The news talks about a new vigilante, and people in jackets discuss Pancor contaminating rice with chemicals. They plan to unite against Pancor and have heard about the new superhero, intending to seek his help. Meanwhile, Sonkaka wakes up to Vulong cooking in her room, wearing a skirt for the first time. Teddy suggests she has a crush on Sonkaka. Outside, they learn about a person responsible for arson, a violinist. Sonkaka confronts him, but he turns out to be a formidable opponent with a blade in his violin case. Pancor convinces others to surrender the serum, neutralizing the poison from the contaminated rice. A violinist, mistreated and targeted by Pancor since childhood, faces the wrath of a new hero. Pancor, infuriated, orders all orphans to unite. Father calls the orphans, prompting them to abandon their normal lives and wreak havoc. Numerous dead bodies pile up, primarily officials and undesirables. Simultaneously, two government officials are attacked in their car, but strong guards prevent any harm. Suddenly, a martial arts master with a mask on the back of his head appears, swiftly defeating the guards. However, Sonkaka intervenes, saving the official. Pancor, it turns out, commands a global network of thousands of dangerous orphan killers. Sonkaka looks at the fighter's mask and recognizes a familiar symbol, the same one responsible for setting fire to the market. Filled with determination, the hero decides to take matters into his own hands and fight against the bullies. Meanwhile, officials are perplexed about what to do with the serums. Even if a cure exists, there might not be enough. They reach a consensus that the new drug must be legalized to prevent the immorality of future generations. When Sonkaka returns home, he talks to Teddy, and Vulan reveals that she worked in the Southeast Hospital and knew Sonkaka's mother. Despite searching for him after he ran away, she never found him. Vulan treated Sonkaka's mother, who didn't want to die at home. Shocked, Sonkaka sits down on the couch. The official receives a lab report about the serum, discovering it was manufactured by a shell company called Pencor. Attempting to recall the serum carrying cars, the man realizes he doesn't have their plate numbers. Official calls another member, urging him to stop Pencor, or he will take matters into his own hands. The villain, however, wastes no time and leads men to attack Sonkaka. Despite his weakness, he clings to hope while Pan Hor, merely observing, unleashes his crazed army on the hero. As people face the imminent threat of being injected with serums, Sankaka races against time to save them. The serum administrators receive orders to halt everything, but succumbs to the fatal shot. With the looming question of whether one person can thwart all the serum machines, a girl comes to Sankaka's aid. Together, they overturn a truck carrying vaccines. As Sankaka grabs the bottles, a lightning strike causes the vaccine bottles to explode, resonating at the same frequency as those in his hands. Meanwhile, Pancor's men construct a new villain using hidden body parts. Bandits spread the word of a new hero named Gundala, who is unaware of his identity. The newly created villain commands an army, preparing for an impending great war. And Sankaka, reaching the rooftop, witnesses Pancor's men attacking his friend. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning strikes the hero, putting a stop to the criminals. An official rushes in, shooting Pancor, who expresses gratitude to fate for his transformation. I hope you enjoyed our recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you in the next recap.